Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions Berkshire. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a TP-Link Amada Wi-Fi 6 access point using a iPhone or a mobile phone app. Um, I'm gonna do unbox this, uh, run through some of the features quickly, um, show you what it looks like, and then we're gonna go through the setup. If you do just wanna skip straight to the setup on the mobile phone, then please do, and the time for that is just here. Um, so, let's get straight into it. So this is TP-Link's Amada, um, so TP-Link Amada, so basically that's the brand, Amada's their uh, kind of software, their controller software that they use for their centrally managed uh, network devices such as access points, switches, etc., routers, um, and the model number is the EAP610, um, not the AX1800, that's a little bit misleading, AX is actually 802.3 AX, which is actually just Wi-Fi 6, it's just the standard for Wi-Fi 6. They now call it Wi-Fi 6 because it's a little bit easier to understand than 802.3 AX. Um, and then this number here, the 1800, that is the total throughput of this access point. So that means uh, if you've got all four antennas in this, so two 5 gigahertz and two 2.4 gigahertz, then the total theoretical throughput of that would be 1800 megabits per second. However, if you're connecting to this device, you're never going to be using all of those antennas at once. You'll only be using one of them. And this was done in a lab, those speeds. So actually, um, in a normal environment, it's much more noisy from a radio frequency perspective. Um, so you're not going to get anywhere near those speeds. So it's a little bit misleading, that figure, but it's something that's done by most of the brands. So uh, you don't really need to pay it any attention. Just don't think, I've got a one gig internet connection. I've got an 1800 meg uh access point i'm going to be able to use the full capacity mindset you won't with this access point or with any other access point that's advertising this to be honest right uh, and it's sealy mounted wi-fi 6 access point um you might notice there's quite a big box um like i said this is the ap610 this is actually the version one there is a version two now and there's a big difference and i'm going to go through that in a minute when i take to open this box up so without any further ado let's uh let's open this box up and then we'll run through a few more bits once you've had a chance to look at it. So we'll get the cellophane off, get the box open and see what's in it. Right, a couple of guarantees or something of guides. We've got the access point. Now the first thing that really strikes you when you open this box is the absolute mega size of this access point. I mean, it is basically the same size as my head possibly even thicker than my head. It is absolutely massive. Um, yeah, huge, like a, almost like a fruit bowl or something. It's absolutely massive. So there's the access point. You also get a quick start guide. Oh no, yeah, quick start guide. And you get a uh, some other licensed stuff. And this is just a little bit about the Amada products, how they all work, etc. If you remember Amada, the TP-Link software. If you think of this uh, kind of like Ubiquiti Unify, that would be how it is. So that's the brand, that's the uh, controller software. Right, the other thing you get in the box is the bracket, the ceiling mount for that, which appears to be flush, um, which is great because you need it to be able to size this thing. Um, and then you get some mounting screws, etc., some plugs, and a power source. Um, so this is um, slightly unusual, I would say, for a sort of business grade access point is the fact that you don't get a PoE injector, you get a actual three pin plug. Uh, very useful if you're at home, um, so you can just literally plug this straight in uh, into a socket, etc., and then it's pretty much ready to go. But normally you would have a PoE injector, I would say, with a sort of business grade uh, model. So, yeah, we talked about the size. I would say that this is a version one. There is a version two. You don't know this is a version one because on the box, they obviously don't write version one because it's the first one, so they don't need to. Uh, but the version two says version two on it, and it is significantly different in terms of its size. So it's a lot smaller. This is, so I've got my figure somewhere. Let me have a look. So this is 24.3 centimeters across or 9.6 inches across, which is absolutely enormous. It's also 2.5 inches thick. I think that's 63, uh, sorry, 6.3 centimeters. So, I mean, it's really thick. Uh, it's not very heavy. 
but that's because there's not really that much in it. This is a two times two access point, so it's got two uh, five gigahertz radios and two uh, two point four gigahertz radios. Um, but the new one is significantly smaller, so that's uh, 6.3 inches or 160 centimeters across. So that is about, to give you a comparison, I've got a Unify Light 6 access point here, um, which is a similar model, 2x2, two and two. Well, you wouldn't think it. Look at the difference in the size. I don't know how that got through. Like, how, who authorised that? But, um, yeah, so that's, that is about the same. That's about 6.3. So that, the size difference on the new one is significant so uh yeah big big thing for us now this for us we're using these in an installation coming up uh next week and uh it's not an issue the size because we're putting them into a ceiling so they're gonna be hidden but if we weren't i mean you couldn't put out someone's ceiling in the house it's just ridiculous to like take the ceiling down but um so yeah that's uh, my big observation of this access point straight away it's really um other than that, it looks all good in terms of specs. Like I said, we've got uh, it's two times two. Um, it's obviously Wi-Fi six enabled, and that is on both uh, both channels on two point four and the five gigahertz. I feel that TP-Link have kind of missed a trick here by not putting Bluetooth into these access points. Um, if you compare that to the uh, Ubiquiti like this, for example, or uh, like Aruba Instant On, etc., they've all got Bluetooth. Um, which means that the mobile set, mobile phone setup is a little bit easier. It's um, it doesn't take quite as much sort of fiddling around um, as it as it would if um, if you don't have a Bluetooth. So that is my observation on that. Other than that, I think the uh, access point is pretty good. Um, but we're going to get it plugged in, set it up, and show it how, show you how it works. So let's uh, do that. So obviously this is the UK plug with the three pin. I'm just going to use that. So you plug that in, we plug that in, and then put that into there, and then that's going to start blinking up, you get the blue light at the bottom there. The other thing you need to do is you need to get a uh, cable from your router uh, on the LAN ports on your router, and you need to plug that in as well. Now, if you've got a PoE switch, or sorry, PoE Plus switch, so that's uh, not PoE, PoE Plus, is the standard you need to use for this. So for example, this is a Jetstream, uh, so TP-Link Jetstream uh, TLSG2210P, uh, then this switch is able to provide um, PoE Plus, so this is perfect for uh, using this. So that means basically you don't have to use the power lead as well, you just use the data cable. So data cable from your router into one of these ports and then from one of these ports into your access point. Particularly useful, say for example, you're gonna use two, or maybe three of these access points if you want to use probably use a switch rather than having lots and lots of power plugs uh, plugs in everywhere so that's that's when you'd use a switch um, let me just show you I've got a router here quickly if I just grab one right so uh, the ports that you would plug the LAN the Ethernet cable into so if you imagine that's the front of the router and you've got the plugs at the back normally they're yellow not on all models but normally they're yellow so these ones here uh, they are your LAN uh, connections so you would take this cable this ethernet cable go from there straight into that and then you've got the power cable as well obviously this is not providing poe so you would need the power cable on that i hope that's clear um right so once it's got powered up it blinks for a little while and then once it stops blinking then you're ready to go with the mobile setup so i am going to run through that um and i'll let you see the screen so you can see what i'm doing it's pretty simple Okay, so the first thing to do is to go into the App Store and download TP-Link Amada. It should be the top one. You can see I've already downloaded it, so it's in my cloud there. Um, and that does, shouldn't take long to download at all. And then it's going to ask you a load of features like, oh, are you happy to do this? Can you do that? Etc. Etc. Yes, just say OK. Allow. I accept the terms and conditions. Read them if you wish. Uh, I confirm. Oh, hang on. So that's one to say... Do you want to send them your data on uh, helping them improve things basically? So I'm going to say yes to that. And then we're going to say continue. Now what's local permission? The reason for this is because it's got to try and discover uh, devices on your local network. So you can uh, you can give it that local permission. Actually, I've already given it that. So let's go, oop. let's go back to Amada. I've already given local permission. Right. Um, so when you come in, it will give you like, 
no one's logged into this, please log in. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, because we don't actually need to go to cloud access. You can go across to standalone access points and it's gonna say, can I use your, uh, can I use your um, location? I'm gonna say allow while using the app. Right, now you'll see that I have got the access point has come up on my list of standalone access points straight away. And that is because if you look at my screen up in the top right there, I'm on the Wi-Fi. So I'm connected to my router via Wi-Fi, which means, and this is plugged into the, into the router, which means that, uh, sorry, the access point is plugged into the router, which means that I am able to uh, see this instantly. If there is a situation where you are either too far from your router to be able to get Wi-Fi, or your Wi-Fi doesn't provide, uh, sorry, your router doesn't provide Wi-Fi, or any other reason, then there is another way of setting this up. So I'm just going to say, if you were, if you were setting this up like this, you just click on that like that, and then you've got to do, go through the setup. If you didn't have this, so let me just turn off my Wi-Fi, and we'll do it, we'll do it without. So now. If I go back out of this, it shouldn't be able to discover this because I'm not on the Wi-Fi. So oh, let me just, there you go. Right, so there's no, because I'm not connected to a uh, Wi-Fi, um, it, uh, it's not able to discover it because it can't see it in the network because I'm not on the network. So uh, you can click on this little thing here and it gives you instructions. How do I connect to an EAP? So you've got to find on the back of the access point. So I'll just show you this now quickly. On the back of the access point here, there is some Wi-Fi credentials, and essentially what you do is in your, uh, oh, sorry, in your Wi-Fi, you turn on your Wi-Fi. Oh, sorry, I just turned it off a minute ago. But you can see in your Wi-Fi there's going to be two uh, TP-Link ones, a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz. You can click on either of those and then uh, use the password that's written on the back of the access point to connect to that. And then you will be connected directly via Wi-Fi to the access point. Now, when I said earlier that I thought that TP-Link Armada had missed a trick when, um, when they didn't put Bluetooth in is because access points like Ubiquiti and Aruba don't need you to go through this process. They just use Bluetooth, so they just connect directly to the access point without you having to sign into stuff, etc. So I think that's a better system, but you know, uh, they just obviously decided that they or felt that they didn't need that. Maybe they felt they didn't have enough room in the access point. I'm not sure what the, what the thing was there. Right, so then you go to standalone access point, so we're back into this. So either way you connect to it, either if you connect through your Wi-Fi or directly to the access point, you're gonna to get to this point eventually. Then you can just click on the access point. Now you wanna set up a username and a password. Um, if you're going to be uh, do, doing this, make sure that you write something down. Username, make it simple, say admin or something. So I'm just gonna do it for the sake of this, I'm just do admin, admin. If it lets me, it's not gonna let me set, set admin. No, oh, sorry, I can't write that. Can I admin, I'm gonna write admin, admin. That's a very secure password, right? So we'll get next on that. And then once you've set your username and password, just make sure you remember that, because if you ever have to log in again, uh, then you're going to need to use that that password and the only way to get around that if you don't know the password is to factory reset the access point which is a bit of a pain so I would suggest that you just write that down or remember that username and password right so now you've got wireless basic settings the SSID is just the Wi-Fi name so you can literally call that whatever you want so if I just say my Wi-Fi and that's the name that is broadcast so the name that you see when you're looking for Wi-Fi you could just have my Wi-Fi Password, I'm just gonna say password one, two, three, oh, it's so secure. And then the bands, the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz, there shouldn't really be many reasons why you wouldn't want to use both of those. Um, but say, for example, you didn't just, you just wanted to use 2.4 or just five, then you can just turn one of those off. And then you're just gonna press done. Right now it's gonna give you a little summary. These are, these are the things you've decided. And you go, yep, great, next. And then it goes to apply those settings. Now we have basically set that access point up, but it's pretty simple to set up at the moment, pretty basic. And there are a couple of other things we can do. So I'm just gonna wait for it to go through its setup and then we'll show you um, the rest of it. So that didn't take long at all. So we go to continue. Oh, this bit takes a bit longer. 
Right, so now we've got a kind of summary of our access point. Uh, most of this is not going to be a major concern to you. Um, it just shows you things like, oh, uh, so like the radio, uh, what's being used there, number of connected clients, etc. SSID, as I just said a minute ago, is the Wi-Fi name. Um, if you want to make some changes to this now, then you can basically press this little cog button in the top here. So this is the settings cog. So we just click on that. Name, first of all, that's quite a mouthful. That's just basically its MAC address. So if we just say, uh, let's just call this uh, study Wi-Fi. Or, or we can just call it study. Let's just call it study, save. So now we know which one it is, especially if you've got a few of them, then uh, study is just quite helpful to understand which one's which. Um, the radios, that just shows which ones, uh, which uh, channels you're using. And then also, um, what uh, megahertz they're using and which channel they're set to. So for, say for example, you knew that you had frequency um, interference issues with channel seven, you can just come in here and move it to like channel 12 or whatever you wanna do. So that is, that's just a little bit more advanced than that. And this is the transmit power. I would just leave it on high unless you've got an issue with uh, you know someone being right next to you that's getting interference, etc., or something like that. And then five gigahertz, you can do exactly the same, but we don't need to do that. Um, so the SSID is the one that's quite useful. So obviously, if you ever want to come in here and change the, so actually I don't like my Wi-Fi or I don't like my password, you can just come in here and change it. Um, you can also change the security type um, or turn it off into there. But say for example, um, we'll go back on that. Say for example, you wanted another Wi-Fi. So we press this plus, and now actually what we're going to do, I think I could just, oh, I can't make it into a guess. That's annoying. So if I just make this into uh, my Wi-Fi 2, uh, and we'll give a security mode of WPA2 personal, give it passwords, and we're gonna say uh, the same one, passwords, one, two, three, save, create. Right, so we're now gonna have two Wi-Fi uh, SSIDs coming from this access point. So uh, you could actually say, for example, say you wanted to split the channels and you wanted one to be 2.4 and one to be five gigahertz, then you could just go in and do that. Um, there isn't an option, interestingly, on here to do a guess that I can see. Yeah, it's actually pretty basic. So there's no option to do a guest um, SSID. So that's a little bit irritating really. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to do that on the app in standalone mode. Um, and then obviously if you've got an account associated with this, then you can change the account there. LED is quite useful. That just basically turns off the blue light on the front. If you've got it in a bedroom or something like that, um, then uh, you can just turn that LED light off. And that is basically it. The only other thing that's quite useful is uh, on the app is the locate. Um, is if you, for example, you've got, uh, got like five or six of these or however many you've got and you wanna know which one's which, you can press locate and a little blue light on the front will start blinking um, to show you which one um, is, is it connected to and then you can give them names so it's easy to understand. Um, the reboot is useful, sometimes you've got issues and the reset, obviously if you wanna redo everything, say for example, you've forgotten that admin password then you can do that as well. So that is essentially it, I mean it's set up, um, we don't really need to do much more on this now, that's, that's it, it's a standalone mode study, there it is in the app. Um, and that's that. It's not the most advanced setup without using the Amada controller, but it's great if you're just gonna be setting this up at home. So, so that's our access point all set up. Um, that's it, I hope you found this useful. Um, I will go through this and show you some other features on the uh, Amada controller. Um, and some of the things you can do to when you adopt it on there. Things like guest Wi-Fi, uh, things like uh, scanning, uh, getting alerts for um, rogue access points, um, things like meshing them across uh, to another access point. All of these can be done in the Amada controller, but that's what we're doing here today. We're just doing a very basic setup on the mobile phone. Thanks very much for watching. I do hope you found the video useful. Um, please do subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Thank you.